He's a man of the backcountry wild. He's a man with the backcountry style. Searching for treasure yet untold. Up and down the creeks for his gold, and it's minor bust. Minor bust. Minor bust because it's in his blood, and that's what a miner does. Just like the gold rushers of old who live and died for their gold. With picks, back shovels, rifles in hand. Up and down the creeks of the backcountry land, it's minor bust. Minor bust because it's in his blood, and that's what a miner does. Last time on Minor Bust. It was late in the season. And we headed out to the claim once again. Getting into the sample hole right away. Moving gravels and washing throughout the day. Finally shutting down to find out around some pretty good colds. Ooh, that's a nice chunk in there. Same with that one. Oh yeah. And another nugget. Mm. Another one in there. Another one in there. It's just the one, another one in there, just the ones you can see. We also spent some time exploring the lower half of this claim. From finding an old prospector shovel to coming across an old prospector shaft. We also enjoyed a good hot meal, which Josh really seemed to enjoy. You just can't beat a good hot meal and sitting around the campfire and enjoying each other's company throughout the night. Getting back to washing as much gravel as we can through the day. Taking it down to the creek to carefully pan out the concentrate. What a great way to end the season on the little nugget mine. You just can't argue with gold in the pan. What do you think? Good haul for our last trip out to the little nugget mine? Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe we could have moved a few more buckets, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Starting to think that. <laughs> oh well. We'll be here when we're back. Yep. After cleaning up camp, we hike out for the last time. Thinking of all the adventures we've had and the season to come. Oh, over there, We're down on our Lightning Creek claim. Got a lot of work to go yet. Just established base camp. Got to slash open this old trail down to the river here. And uh, look for a camp down there eventually, but that'll probably be next season. Yeah, you can already see lots of nice rock all through here. I'm assuming down in the flats there should be some nice gold. Yeah, it's been raining. For the last few days, it'll be raining the whole time we're here. But yeah, we should get busy and we'll get this trail opened up and uh, make our way down to the river and see what's what.
get the trail in. Got one trail going in the top end. One coming down here in the middle. Like this spot in here it has a really nice bend in here. Really big low point. A little bit swampy back in here. Yeah, it's getting pretty late. Today we still have to get uh, the firewood going. Get, uh, the fire started there before night time. We'll try to dry off a little bit before bed. So yeah, we'll head back to camp. Uh, tomorrow we'll come down here. We'll play around in here and do a little bit of banning. You can already see a couple little channels tucked in the hillside here. Yeah, we'll hike on out of here and get that going. Well, we just managed to get our fire and everything going. Try to dry off a little bit. At least warm up a bit before night anyway. I'm pretty wet. <laughs> yeah. Especially charging through the bush, opening up trails. Yeah, we're just soaking wet. It's been raining for days. It's still drizzling out. It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. Brutus. Brutus. Oh, baby. Just put a network of trails all down through here. We've got a pretty, pretty big section of this river. It's supposed to have a, a really good gold history. So uh, I'm just going to snoop around for the rest of the season here and uh, really open things up in here for uh, next year. Yeah, we're going to dry off a bit, have a little bit of chow before that sun goes down. We managed to bring out all the tools we needed for the job. Unfortunately, for some reason we forgot to bring an extra pair of clothes. It was one cold night and one wet morning. There's really only one way to cure being wet and cold, and that's to head down to the river and get busy for the day. Joshua isn't looking too happy, but as soon as I find a little gold in the pan, I'll warm right up. Well, we just did our first pan. It's already looking pretty promising. a bunch of smaller stuff, one, two, three nice flakes, that's pretty good for the first pan. While I still might be a little wet and a little cold, the finding gold in every pan is starting to warm me up, and I'm just getting ready to begin to explore. Big gravel banks through the back of the woods here. Another place to check out. Really interesting deposit in there. Some red rich, black stained gravel. Pull a few samples out, Let's see what we can get. One thing about this country, force your way through all these willows. Oh, you know where we are? 
Right here. Right there. <laughs> Little river up above. There should be some prospecting in the back of the bush. Lots of clay, eh? Yeah. Well, we crisscross all over this claim, grabbing sample pans as we go, playing all the sights and sounds. But we'll let Josh have one last hurrah before we head out. It was a wet trip, but overall a good one. We also managed to find some pretty nice golds. We also went off and explored a little town called Barkerville, where the gold rush really began. It was the largest city this side north of San Francisco and must have been one great place to be in its day. Also visiting prospectors from the past like John from Devon, England in 1877. Didn't live a very long life, but I'm sure it was one great adventure. And very well could have worked in workings like these. This is a very rich area in gold and history. Walking through these valleys, you can feel and almost hear the prospectors from the past. But with the snow upon the hills, it's time for us to move on out of here. Now well, it's time to take Josh on another adventure and show him a little more of BC. I spent many years in these woods pursuing steelhead on the fly. But of course, we're gonna have to get him up to speed and show him a little bit about fly casting. Casting steelhead flies can be a little tricky, but we'll show him a few of the basic casts and we'll get him well on his way. We'll leave him be and let him learn from his mistakes. As for me, I need to get back into the swing of things after being away from these rivers for around 12 years. Well, we finished our first day of steelheading. No success, a couple nibbles, but more than likely just trout or dolly varden. So yeah, maybe our luck will change tomorrow. But uh, at least we'll have a good dinner tonight. Fried onion, potato, and sausage. A little bit of coffee, and uh, just enjoy the rest of the night. After a good night's sleep, we wake up to a chilly morning to begin our day. Going most of the day without a single strike, till eventually finally hooked into a nice little salmon. It's always nice to hook into something, but it's definitely not what I'm after. So, I pull a trick that I've always done, steelhead fishing. If one river isn't good, we're going to keep on searching till we find a river with a good run. So we pack up and we drive through the night. 
And we just pulled up into the Susquehanna. Decided we'd leave the Kixbeox River behind. <laughs> We're just gonna sleep in the truck. My Brutus here decides he's gonna be a lap puppy. <laughs> oh. You gonna be able to sleep with that big brood on ya? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Rudy, you're getting too soft. Huh? Prudy. He's a big baby, Brutus. Waking up early in the morning to begin the day. These pools are deep and clear, and I can't seem to spot out any steelhead. So I decide we're going to pack up and we're going to head into a new valley. This is the Maurice River, and it usually has some pretty good runs, but a little hard to access. More of a river for a boat than on foot, but I know of a few spots we can hit in the lower sections. Looking into another late run salmon. Always fun to bring something in. I'm sure Brutus be a little concerned about the critters and pulling out of the water. As it is his first fishing trip as well. We also run into one of the locals. This grizzly bear Seems like he's eating grass, but what he's actually doing is stirring up an ant's nest and licking him off the blades of grass. Just amazing that a big creature like this can feed on an ant pile. This is the first time Josh and Brutus have seen a grizzly bear, and I'm sure they're both a little concerned. As I know, every time he looks at me in the eyes, I get a little shiver down my spine. Leaving the grizzly bear behind, we head up to the upper reaches of the Maurice, just to come across a roadblock. There's been a little dispute throughout BC about an oil pipeline going through these watersheds. And I definitely can see their concern with all the beauty around and the fisheries we should be looking after. But that's politics, and I'm more into the wilderness. With limited access and a roadblock, I take Josh down to the Bulkley River where I know we'll hook into some steelhead. Mm -hmm. So Josh, he just caught his first steelhead and lost him. Took mm -hmm. my hook. My yeah. Well, that's the problem with fly fishing, you gotta be gentle. It's just the morning, there'll be more coming. While well, it was a cold day of fishing with the fog rolling in, Josh took to the fire eating beef jerky while Brutus sat along the shore and enjoyed some old rotten salmon jerky. Them two sat along the shore for the rest of the day, while I fish hard right into the night. Not landing anything, but it was still enjoyable for all. Well, good morning. 
This is day four for our steelheading trip. So far, fishing's been slow, but I've uh, been hearing from a lot of the fishermen and guides that uh, steelhead runs are a little slow this year. I don't know if it's uh, becoming a problem. Or I almost think the runs, because the season seems to be changing all around the world, I think the runs are pushing later myself, but uh, hopefully it's not an indication of a big problem for our future fishing. Yeah, so far I've hooked into two steelhead, one smaller one and uh, one real nice one in this run here. But uh, that's fly fishing and barbless hooks too makes it a little more challenging as well. Yeah, this is one of my favorite runs. Fairly decent access to this. And then uh, this is where I hooked my first steelhead on the fly rod. So uh, I guess it always kind of has a special place in my heart. I always figure where you've caught fish in the past is a good place to uh, catch them again and have success. But yeah, I like this run here. Down river, there's probably a good mile of a uh, steady rapid water flow and fish have to push their way up through here in this slack water is their first real chance to uh, hold for a little bit and rest and it uh, gives a guy a chance to uh, catch them but you can fish here all day and uh, as fish come up it gives you a chance to hook into one but yeah if you uh, look up here there's a nice current in the corner the slack water right between where that faster water and the slower water is. There's a nice deep hole in here. These bigger rivers are a little harder to fish. You gotta be able to uh, read the water. It's almost like uh, prospecting. <laughs> if you're uh, a good fisherman, generally you could be a good prospector or vice versa. Because uh, the fish like to hold where uh, the gold drops out. So that's kind of a uh, an interesting little thing. Yeah, I'm out here early in the morning to lay claim to my fishing hole for the day. I'm going to sit here and fish the day away and hopefully we're going to hook into a big steelhead. I spent my day on the hunt for steelhead. And Josh and Bruce did a lot of exploring of the shore. But I keep telling them steelhead on the fly are called a fish of a thousand casts for a good reason. Well, good morning. Out here early. My son there, Joshua, is still sleeping. This is okay. Young guy needs his rest. Been fishing pretty hard last four days here. Trying to hunt down the steelhead. So far uh, Josh has caught one lost it. And I've caught four and lost all of them. <laughs> you know, you're fishing light tackle, single barbless hook. And uh, in all reality, you're out here fly fishing for the steelhead. It's more of a, a sport. Just the fun of that. Uh, Hooking into one is plenty good enough, but it'd be nice to actually land one to show you guys what the steelhead are all about. Probably one of the nicest looking fish up in this part of the world, and uh, definitely the best sporting fish. Uh, if you don't know what the steelhead are, they're a uh, rainbow trout, ocean run, so uh, they grow the size of salmon. They have the strength of the salmon and uh, fight like the trout. That's why they're uh, one of the best sporting fishes up here. But yeah, we're gonna go hard today. That's why I'm out here just as the sun's coming out. Hopefully the fog breaks up a little bit and get a little more uh, sun today. 
But yeah, that's the plan today. We're gonna go hard and uh, see if we can hook into a couple more steelhead. Hopefully this time land one. Seems to be a little bit of a challenge. She's a big one. She's yeah. a splashing out of the water. Mm -hmm. She's a big one. Yeah. Just a splashing out of the water. This is where I caught my first steelhead. Oh, I lost it. Oh, I hate it when you lose them. A classic move on the steelhead's part. A quick roll and he just spits that out. Oh, I lost it. Fishing hard the rest of the day. I think I went from a thousand casts to two, but I managed to hook and do a couple more. But unfortunately, the steelhead got the better of me. But it was a good trip and a great experience for Josh. Over the years, I've done a lot of prospecting, melting the fines down and keeping the bigger gold. This year, I decided to take a bar from my first years of prospecting. This gold is from around 20 gold creeks over my first years of prospecting. I've also been married for 20 years this season and I decided I'd make something special for me and the wife. This gold's already been cleaned with soda ash and borax. So to melt it down again for a pour, all you need to do is add a little more borax to keep things moving. For the molds, I'm going to use an old technique using a cuttlefish bone. You just smooth off both sides, place in a ring in the mold, and smooth it out, carve channels for the gold to pour. Placing the mold upright in sand. That way if any gold pours over the edge, it'll just get caught in the sand and won't splatter. You definitely don't want to mess around with molten gold. For my first attempt at this, things are going quite well. Just open up the mold, and stick the hot gold in a little cold water. This old technique is working pretty good and I'm happy with the results. Just need to trim off the little tags and smooth everything out. With the tags cut off, I just need to smooth the ring out. This little Dremel tool will do the job just fine. It doesn't take very long for this ring to start to take shape.
Now to really smooth this ring out, with a little polish compound and a polishing brush, these rings are really starting to take shape. Well, here's the finished product, and I'm pretty pleased with myself for my first goldsmithing job. With all the meaning in these rings, and all the gold and the adventures, I'm sure the wife will be happy with her present. Till next time, take care out there. He's a man of the backcountry wild. He's a man with the backcountry style. Searching for treasure yet untold Up and down the creeks for his gold And it's minor bust Minor bust Minor bust Because it's in his blood And that's what a miner does Just like the gold rushers of old Who live and died for their gold With picks, packs, shovels, rifles in hand Up and down the creeks in the backcountry land It's minor bust Minor bust because it's in his blood and that's what